you know, I'm interested in narration. Book to film is a very different medium, but they obviously carry over the themes that you wrote in your book, but you have different mediums, things that work in movies that don't work in books and vice versa. Can you talk about the narration in your books and kind of how you narrate the films and how Harden and Tessa do the narration in the movie? The actors do it, but the difference in book narration versus film narration and how different that has to be written. Yeah, I mean, it's literally night and day. It's Mm. so much of it because I'm so used to overwriting. Even in my books, I every little detail is there. So then in the movie, the job is the actors or the director to portray some things through eye contact, through body gestures, through these little nuances that in a book you could literally just spell out for them. So taking away that ability to spell it out I mean, that's the point of film, but it's interesting. And it took a while for us to get the voiceovers. Each movie we've actually, I mean, I would say probably had 20 different versions of these voiceovers because as an audience, I think voiceovers can get, they're either good or they're just like, they feel lazy. So getting the right balance of a voiceover that doesn't feel like lazy writing or just not right uh took a while but i'm really happy with the way that both of them are narrated and it kind of helps us set up the point of view the first movie is from tessa's point of view the second movie is supposed to be from harden's point of view so those were fun but they were challenging to try to condense you know 600 pages of internal thought to 40 an hour and 45 minutes of visuals only yeah, I know. I love how you opened the first film with Tessa's narration and the second film opens with Harden's narration with the lake and everything. It was really cool how that all kind of ties together. Joe, your character opens the first movie with your narration uh, and Hero, your character opens the second movie with your narration. I wanted to ask you as actors how the recording process of that narration goes. Is that something you end up doing in ADR? Do you know what visuals your narration is going over? I'm just always found that to be interesting because mm. they are they set the tone for the film. So interestingly, I'll start with you, Joe, just the narration. Well- yeah, I, I uh, the narration thing's interesting because sometimes it's written into the script quite specifically and that's what ends up happening. Sometimes you don't even know it's going to be there and it's something that they add in the edit. They rearrange things and the beginning of the movie is different. Uh, or, or sometimes you have a general guideline and... Um, but there's a lot of, you know, mixing around. And with uh, with my experience narrating on the first film, you go into an ADR studio and the lines were in the script, but they changed a bit on the day. And then you do them like a million different ways. And then they cut together mm. the ways that they want and they direct you. Yeah. And Hero, for you, you're basically recapping the first movie in your narration in the beginning of the second film, just the process of doing that, because you're narrating it in your character almost, essentially. You talk about finding the emotion of it as you narrate it. Yeah, I mean, as Joe said, sometimes it's more specific and sometimes like the description in the script of what it's going to go over might change uh, change in the actual end product. But um, in the edit room, they're always trying to make the whole end product as good as it can be. So they're always helping you as opposed to as opposed to, you know, making it worse. So, you know, you've always kind of got that safety net. But it's funny. I remember I did like I had to send a, a, a voice note from my phone like, on my friend's staircase initially of it. <laughs> And then, you know, as I say, like, I think a lot of the time it's just constantly evolving. So sometimes if the shots change or they don't get one or they need to add something else, it's kind of constantly evolving and you just trust the process and trust the edit and they will make it look great in the end. The club scene is incredible. I I, I remember watching uh, Aaron Sorkin and David Fincher's The Social Network and seeing, uh, you know, you have Timberlake and Eisenberg shouting over each other with this music in the club. When you filmed that that club scene, which I know you're in as well, uh, I was wondering, like, was the music there? Like, did the actors have to shout at a level with no music behind them? Yeah. I've heard stories about how does how did that scene get filmed? Yeah, so it was dead silent, um, oh, dead really? silent, like not even like people kept being like, "Can we play some music to even just like create a vibe?" But they, the director was just like, "Nope, it's dead silent." So it was. I'm talking like if somebody coughed, we'd have to redo it. It was dead silent. So all of these people, for me, it was like, this is only my second film experience. So I was just like, wait, this is, so now every time I see a club or a bar or a nightclub scene, I'm like, I wonder if it's silent because everyone's just dancing. And you're like, how do you even get, like for us, there were some people in one little group that were dancing to, I guess their own 
you know, mine. And then another group would be dancing and they wouldn't be dancing like they were dancing to the same song. So it was fascinating to me to have like this nightclub full of extras, dead silent and Joe and Dylan like yelling at each other. And we kept having to be like, be a little louder because there's going to be music and voices and glasses clinging and all of those things. So that was one of those kind of technical things that I learned during that day where I was like, oh, this is how it's done if you don't want to, you know, go and post and pull a bunch of sound out. One thing I find interesting about the idea of after is it's before you meet somebody and then after you meet that person and kind of how your life changes. And then you've now played these characters in two films. I'm interested to know just in general, your personally on your own lives, how the characters have affected you outside of the film. Do you take aspects of Tessa or Hardin with you just like pieces of them? Like I'll start with you, Joe, as, as part of your life personally changed because of playing Tessa. Um, yeah, and I think that's more the behind the scenes stuff, uh, to be honest, uh, when you're, I mean, never having, I, I was never in a movie where you had to be in every scene before uh, mm. in the first film, and that's just, you learn so much from uh, having to do that. So I, I think behind the scenes, there's lots of things that I've taken on that have changed, and with her character specifically, I'm not sure. I think I'm probably sometimes you have a better understanding of things when you have perspective. Uh, so mm. I feel like in five years, I'm going to go, Oh, that's what, that's what she gave me. But, um, mm. uh, yes, yeah, so I'm not sure yet. Yeah. And for you, and for you here or anything particular, yeah, that's changed. No, I think every time you do a role, you put something of yourself into the character and the character kind of gives you something back. And as Joe said, a lot of the time it takes a while before you realize what that is, but a number of things. And I think also some things, you see the character do you might reassure yourself that you don't want to do that anymore huh. so it kind of kind of goes both ways my favorite line in this entire film was the idea that she says i love you too and harden says don't say too it sounds just like you're agreeing with me and i know that's a line that you wrote in the book it's a phenomenal line it kind of reminds me of the empire strikes back moment when he says i love you and she says i know or he says i know i wanted to ask you about that line specifically seeing your characters actually say that line in a film and kind of what that line means to you specifically and kind of seeing these actors bring that line to life so that line actually i think it told lauren like in text message uh but i came up with that from my own life my grandma who I call her mom all um, she's mm -hmm. passed away now, but she used to say to me when we were young, like never say two, it just sounds like you're agreeing. And if you love someone, you love them. You don't need to say two. So then mm -hmm. when I, even when I was a teenager and had like boyfriends for like two days or whatever it would be, <laughs> and they would be like, I love you. And I would never say two. So it's something that even my husband and I, I mean, we've been married 13 years now. We'd never say two. It's like a thing. So seeing it in the book and then seeing people actually, like love that. And I was like, Oh, my yeah. mom's like kind of legacy. Cause she, not to be super depressing, but she passed away before any of this happened to me. So mm -hmm. I'm like, it's kind of carrying it on. And then having it in the movie in the first one, um, it was something I kept fighting for, like for them to say, I love you. And it just didn't feel right or it didn't work out or other people didn't agree. So then mm -hmm. when it came to the second one, it was so important that it, I'm so happy with the scene and the way it turned out. And yeah. it's like, I hope there's so many people around the world now when someone says, I love you too, they're like, don't say too. <laughs> And yeah. it has changed the way I say I love you to my wife now. I mean, I'm not yeah. kidding you. It has that, that much. When that scene happened, I looked over at Lauren on the couch. I'm like, that was a great line. And I, I never even thought about that perspective of it. Yeah, I think it's a really beautiful moment from the books. And, and I'm glad that it's translated to screen because it's a, it's a line that all of us wanted in there. Um, so that means so much that, that you have taken that into, into you know, your own life. And you, you obviously thought that it was, it was so powerful and, and, and you know, like a, such a good point that you've taken it on board. And I think that's just testament to Anna's writing, because as we know, that was, that was from the book. So uh, that's great to hear. I want to just say thank you to being so kind to my wife. My, Lauren, has, Lauren is the biggest fan of these books. She reads them all the time. I've become a fan of them. I've watched the first movie so many times. I can't wait to watch the new one again with her. It's really brought us together in a very special way. And you've been a very big topic of conversation in our house. And that line, I love you know, I love you too, is something that I think don't say too is going to stick with me for a long time. So thank you, Anna. I appreciate well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Yeah. Thank you. No, I appreciate you. Have a great day. Congratulations and stay thank safe. Thank you.